one body, so it is with Christ. And then he goes on to describe the local expression of Christ at Corinth. So the question that this image, body, body, hand, body, eye, body, ear, raises for us in the local church is who is it that intends to be treated as a hand or foot or an eye or an ear in the body? There's a unity here. There's an organic connectedness that's implied in this body so that it just seems to me something is really unusual for a Christian to relate tangentially to the body. It just seems ill, seems sick. seems like a growth. You know, like, ooh, what are you? I'm not part of the body. Well, what are you? Where are you? <laughs> There's just something strange about that, don't you think? The picture here is that the body has hands and eyes and ears and feet and Everybody finds who they are in the body and then experiences organic. And if that can't happen in this church, then either we're doing something wrong or you're doing something wrong or there's another place. But it's really big. Okay, so those are my five biblical foundations for taking membership as seriously as we, I want to say, do. I don't think we do. I think I'll say should. I don't think we're doing all we should at Bethlehem. I really don't. I think we need to up the ante of membership uh, and call for a higher level of commitment than we do. So let me sum it up. Each of us uh, should be a member of a local body of believers. That means, one, We should take responsibility to discipline those in the body who don't repent. Second, it means we should declare ourselves to be part of the body so that if we are wayward and unrepentant, we can be put out of the body. We should want to be in that position. A lot of people in America, of course, wouldn't want to be in that position. Well, I wouldn't want to join in order that I could be put out. Because that means being in really means something. Really means something. Number three, it means that we should take our position under a leadership of a particular eldership in a local body. Four, it means that we should declare ourselves to be part of a group who expect the eldership to serve the church well. This church, not every church, this people, not all people. And number five, we should find our place in the organic whole as part of the the body, as a hand or a toe. So that's God's plan for us and for this church. And that's what we mean by membership. All those aspects of membership, and here's a very important point, all those aspects of membership are rooted in the truth that the local church is a visible expression of the universal church. The body of Christ universally is expressed in the bodies of Christ locally. To belong to the body of Christ means in the New Testament to belong to a body of Christ. I'm going to say that again because that's very, very threatening for many Lone Ranger Christians. To belong to the body of Christ in the New Testament meant to belong to a body of Christ. They weren't separate. They weren't like, oh, I'm a part of the universal church and I just cruise. I just go from church to church and small group to small group and parachurch ministry to parachurch ministry and I have no roots like this anywhere. That's not biblical. I close by urging you to pray this through and think this through with us. We have no deadlines. We have no motions. We just have longings. And 
We need to be unified. We can't go forward. We can't go forward without God giving us light on this. Lone Ranger Christians are a contradiction to the body. So I I ask you, are you an accountable member of a local church? And I don't mean by that is your name on a list only. I mean, are you committed to discipline and being disciplined? I mean, have you publicly declared your willingness to be shepherded and to be led by a particular group of pastors or elders? Do you see yourself and your gifts as grafted in to a body in an organic way so that when one hurts, they all hurt? Do you show by your firm attachment to Christ's body that you are attached to Christ? Church membership, brothers and sisters, visitors and that strange phenomenon called regular attenders and members. Brothers and sisters, church membership is a blood-bought gift of God's grace. Oh, I love this church. The older I get, the more I love the church. The more I get, the more patient, I believe, I become with this broken bride. Because I'm it and I'm broken. Just about everything about me is imperfect. No, that's an understatement. Everything about me is imperfect. (laughs) Let's be honest. And so it's easier as I get older to love the imperfect. I'm going to meet Jesus soon. I've been here 28 years. I'm into my 29th year as of two weeks ago. I will give an account for this church. I don't know how it will go. I expect to get my hands smacked. Maybe a few little well-dones on a few points, but not without some, you blew it. If I didn't believe in the gospel and the cross, there's no way I could do this. Nor the elders that stand with me to try to love you well. Because I know, I know there are going to be people who walk out of these services saying, well, that may be their goal, but it isn't working for me. I know that. And uh, I expect I will hear that till the day Jesus comes. Or I die. And I pray that it will never stop me from trying to do better. That will never be paralyzed by the the people who are disappointed with our church. But I just want to stress the positive note as I end. Church membership is sweet. It is a sweet gift of God. More than most of us realize, it is a life-sustaining, faith-strengthening joy-preserving means of God's mercy to us. So I urge you, all of you, all of you, I urge you not to cut yourself off from this blessing. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I stand amazed that I would be privileged called by the Holy Spirit and confirmed by your people that I would be privileged to be an elder at Bethlehem. Absolutely amazing. I want to be faithful. My biggest concern here is not that my people shape up. My biggest concern is that I serve better. That we elders rise to every challenge with love, not with any kind of bitterness or resentment or cynicism. Oh, may we be servants of your blood-bought body, Bethlehem. And would you help us know who that is and who it should be? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.